Hello, it is July already. I don't know what's happened to the time. Half the year is already gone. Just seems extraordinary to me. But anyway, it is July and July is not a time to let up on the sewing. In fact, there's loads of things which can either still be sewn now or now is the perfect time to start sewing them. So I'm gonna break this down into three sections. And the first one is gonna be new things to sew for July. So now we're over the longest day and the days are starting to get shorter. I know, I know, I didn't wanna mention it, but it is happening. So as the days are getting shorter, it does change the sort of things that you can sew. And some things really don't like to be sewn before that point. There are also things which are going to be continuation successional sewing, some of which we started in February, some in the middle of spring. And they're just things which to extend the season that you're going to be picking that or harvesting that, uh, you can keep sewing them now. And then there's also the third category, which is kind of the last chances, the stuff that probably should have been sewn last month, but you could probably get away with it now depending on how long your season is going to be so they're kind of the three sections i'm going to do so i had fully intended to film this up at the allotment this morning and i packed all my stuff up and went up there to do the filming and then when i got there i realized that i hadn't actually brought the seeds with me fantastic jesse so i'm back here now and i was going to come back pick up the seeds go back up there but by now it is absolutely chucking it down not very July weather, I would say. I'm not massively impressed with it, but you know, hopefully we're gonna have some better weather in the next couple of weeks. But anyway, so instead of filming at the allotment this morning, I'm filming back in the studio. Yeah. So we're gonna start with the things which I find prefer to be after the longest day. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is fennel. So Florence fennel, the bulbing type of fennel rather than the frondy type one, like the bronze fennel. This is the one that forms the big heart at the bottom. So on the seed packet, they always say between May and July. I find if I leave it till after the longest day, they are much more successful. If I start planting them in May, they tend to just bolt really, really quickly. So I leave these until now and I will get a load of these in the ground. And I will be sowing most of these things, not just the fennel, but most of them now are direct sown. So instead of earlier in the year when we're starting things in seed trays, most of the things by now can just go straight in the ground because the soil is warm and they'll just grow really happily. Whereas earlier in the year when the soil is still cold, we have to start them off inside. So if you don't have a massive supply of potting compost, it's sometimes better to leave stuff until later in the year when you can just sow them straight outside and not have to worry about any of the potting compost and the little pots and space to have them indoors and protected and all that kind of stuff. So fennel is the first one which I would be sowing directly outside. And another one that I always leave until after the longest day are the radicio and the endive. So they have a tendency to bolt really badly and I don't know whether it's just when I grow them or not, but I always leave them until later. And I'll be growing a couple of different varieties this year. Endive and radicio, both really bitter, but I absolutely love them. So I know lots of people don't, but a really good heart of a red radicio that's just been chopped in half and put in the oven and then a load of balsamic vinegar dribbled over the top. It's just so good. So that's this sort of radicio where they form the long skinny ones and also I have a number of varieties of the short fat ones but they are just saved seeds so there's not really much of a packet to show you but I will be sowing both of them this month. Something else that I'm going to be sowing this month is celeriac. Um, it does depend on the year. I always do one really early in the year and then I do one about now. And, and generally one of them will bolt and one of them won't. And it totally just depends on the year as to which one. So I always do both. I'm hoping that this year it's going to be the after the longest day ones, which are going to be really successful because the first ones are a complete fail. I will also be doing the first sowing of the chimidirapa. So I've got three different varieties of chimidirapa. You might remember that I had been eating this much earlier in the year. We ate this around the February, early March sort of time, but that was ones that I had sown the previous autumn and they had overwintered. So I sow it in two waves. I do one now, which generally I put it into the bed that the broad beans have come out of because the broad beans will come out in about mid July and then I will get the first of the chimidi wrapper in there. Chimidi wrapper is quite interesting in terms of variety names. It tends to just be named after how many days it takes to harvest. So there's a 40 day, I think that's the shortest one. There is a 60 day and there is also a 120 day. I believe there's some in between there as well, but I don't know the exact times, but I, I normally do the 60 day 
and the 120 day and I sew them in two separate patches but normally in the same bed and then you get a good stagger and then I will sew them again around September, October, depending on the weather, maybe early November and then they will be the ones that I then eat in the spring. Chimili wrapper is a flowering turnip top. They are the same plant as a turnip but they don't produce the bulb, they just produce the top part and you get a really beautiful big stocky flower um, it's a bit like a kind of a sprouting broccoli type thing, but it's got a really distinctive flavour and I absolutely love them. In terms of outdoor sewing, it's now time to start sewing things like spring cabbages straight outdoors. We started some off in the greenhouse earlier in the year, about April time, but now you can get them straight in the ground and we will be doing that, which will then give us a really good harvest of them in the early spring, hence the name spring cabbage. But April is a really delicious variety. We had a great deal of success with both April and Greyhound last year. I didn't have any seed for Greyhound this year, so I'm sticking with the April, but it was a really, really lovely, lovely cabbage. So sticking with brassicas, I'm kind of moving on to the last chance brigade. This is Primo. We tried this one last year. Really, really tasty cabbage. And this one you can sow right the way through from March all the way through till now. Uh, this is about kind of the last chance of getting them in really with enough time that they're gonna form any sort of heart. And there are quite a few brassicas where now is kind of last chance. So it goes the same with purple sprouting broccoli. There are so many different varieties of purple sprouting broccoli and they're all pretty similar, if I'm honest. I've never like grown one variety and being like, whoa, that was incredible. I mean, I love purple sprouting, but uh, they do tend to be pretty similar. I think the main differences that I've noticed in them tends to be the time it takes for them to be ready to harvest. So some of them have a much, some of them are quite early, they're quite short time spans, and some of them like way into the following spring. But the one I'm growing this year is the same one I did last year, which is, is early purple, good solid variety. So we'll be picking that around February from a sowing now. I will start these off in a seed tray. Um, you could direct sow them, no problem whatsoever, but I'll start them in a seed tray purely because I won't be planting them out until much later in the year and the space that they would go into if I was going to be direct sowing is actually already taken up with stuff and it will be until kind of the end of September. So I will start these off in a seed tray purely for convenience and that goes the same for quite a lot of the brassicas, mainly because I got well over excited with brassicas this year and the three beds that we kind of dedicated to them for this season are completely full. But I do want to try and continue the season so I'm going to sow in pots, keep them going and then plant them out when the ones that we've already got in there start to tire. We've got quite a lot of short season stuff in there, quite a lot of kohlrabi and cavallanero and things like that. So I will be, uh, so as they come out, I'll be replacing them with the brassicas, which I'll be sowing now. And that is things like the kales. So we've got the, the cavallanero, which is the black Tuscan kale. I tend to sow this in three waves throughout the year and the second one is going in now. This is an absolute staple in my life. I love Cavallanero. I just think it is such a good kale. But I'll also be doing a second sowing of curly kale. This is the dwarf green curled one. I grew this last year. As you know, I whinged a bit about it because I didn't realise it was dwarf and it was quite tiny. But actually the sowing that I made this time last year in the spring it totally came into its own and it seemed to survive the white fly and cabbage white butterfly caterpillars and everything so much better than the others so i'm giving that another chance this year and i promise not to whinge about it being dwarf and the other one i'm going to be doing is scarlet which is just a really beautiful beautiful dark dark kale and that will be my second sowing of all the kales so they'll be the replacement crop for after this lot have kind of done their thing there's also the incredibly exciting romanesco you can sow these up until now, you might be pushing your luck a little bit. It's more of a May, June thing, but we've had such a bizarre year this year. I'm gonna be getting some in now. I, I planted a couple of them really, really early in the year. So I've got some which are kind of this sort of high at the moment, but I'm gonna be doing another sowing now as a backup. This is a wonderful like fractals bit of excitement broccoli. Absolutely love them. I love eating them, they're delicious, but they don't taste enormously different to kind of a mild flavoured broccoli, but it's just the excitement of growing them. I just, I was so excited about them last year. I'm definitely doing them again this year. Okay, I'm gonna stick with the last chances group for a little bit more. There's two others. So there's courgettes. I wouldn't grow maybe the pumpkins or anything that needs to grow really large to produce 
its fruit. But the things like the courgette summer squash, where they're just going to, the plants are going to bulk up and then, and they produce quite a lot of fruit quite quickly. So courgettes you could get away with now. Uh, the main one I'm growing is all green bush. Um, which is just a standard green courgette. I'm also doing a lovely round one, which is this one. But all of those, they're quite quick between sowing and getting them out in the ground. And at this time of year, they're growing so quick because the sun and the rain, particularly the rain at the moment, but the sun and the rain and the soil temperatures are really warm. You could get away with a last sowing of them now to extend your season out the other side. And exactly the same goes for beans and peas, but not the tall ones. So things like French beans, you could still sow now, but you would want to make them a dwarf variety rather than a climbing one that has to put on a lot of growth before it starts producing fruit. I'm not actually growing any dwarf beans this year, but last year I did this variety of yellow bean called Senesta and it was fantastic. The only reason I'm not growing this one again this year is that I've already got a yellow French bean in the ground, but it's a climbing one called Necker Gold. But if you're looking for a dwarf yellow, I would really recommend this. It was prolific and a really good tasting bean and any short peas. So uh, I'm growing two different types of peas this year. I've got the Hearst's Green Shaft, which is a fairly short pea, which you could get away with another sowing of now to extend the season. I've just put some in about two weeks ago. You, they would be fine, but I wouldn't go with something like a tall telephone or a telegraph pea that has to get really, really tall before it starts doing anything. If you're going to be going this late in the year, you want ones which are going to provide you with a crop really quite quickly. OK, let's talk about this succession of sowing ones, because there's still loads of things to sow in July that we've been sowing since March. So I'm talking about carrots. If you watched my last vlog, I've just put in another row of carrots and I'll be putting another one in mid July. I really cut down my carrot varieties this year because the year before I went a bit wild and I just sowed like one row of each type and I just didn't think that was really that useful. So I've cut them down to being Touchon, which is the world's greatest carrot in my opinion, and Jean Obtuse de Doubs. Doubs? I don't know how you say the last word on that. Um, but it's a yellow carrot, which I come really highly recommended. So I'm really looking forward to that, but I haven't had my first harvest of that one yet. So I'm doing both of those carrot varieties and I'll just probably sow one more of each line. So yeah, just carrying on with them. Exactly the same goes for beetroot. This will be my third sowing of beetroot. Some years I've been much more uh, on it with sowing beetroot and getting more of them out there. But first lot we put out, the chickens just like, completely took the tops off them uh, so um, that was a loss and then I sowed some more and then we got caught up doing other things and uh, this will only be my second sowing of beetroot but it will be a direct sowing whereas the first ones were sown in modules and then planted out these ones will just be direct. I'm doing four varieties of beetroot this year. I am doing uh, chogia which is the classic white and pink red beetroot coloured uh, stripy one when you cut it open I'm doing a yellow one called Baldor and then there are two of the Detroit series I'm doing Rubridus and Crimson Globe. Last year I did a bit of a trial between uh, Bolt Hardy which is like the classic it's been a staple in allotments for years uh, I did a trial with that because the Detroit series is supposed to be just as Bolt Hardy as Bolt Hardy if you see what I mean uh, but I actually found that the the Rubridus and the Crimson Globe really outshone the Bolt Hardy. So I've gone in that direction this year. They really outshone them. So uh, I'm just sticking with them this year. So there's no Bolt Hardy, which means I've got a candy stripe one, a yellow one and two red. I'm also still successionally sowing turnips. I've got this really wonderful classic white one called Snowball. I'm also doing Petrovsky, which is a yellow one. I've sown some Purple Top Milan already, but I've run out of seeds of them. So that's just going to be a single sowing. And then I will successional sow with these two. Talking of turnips, this is actually going to be my first sowing this month of Swede. You can sow them in May and June, but I haven't. So, and I don't think it's too late. Last year, I grew one that was called Bora and I had absolutely no success with it whatsoever. It was just a terrible year for me for Swede. They all came out looking more like gnarly old cigars than a turnip. So this year I'm trying Tweed. Uh, wish me luck, because I love Swede. And spring onions. I grow an awful lot of spring onions. 
I sew some every single month going from February all the way through till August. A lot of the seed packets will tell you to stop in June. I've never really understood why because they seem to work perfectly well outside of that time frame. And I also do one really big sowing of them around October, November time indoors and then plant them into either the greenhouse or the polytunnel for overwinter picking. My favourite variety, as you, if you've watched before, you'll know is Lilia. It is a spectacular, bright red beauty of a variety. And I'm also going to be doing a white one, which is Pompeii. And there's always chard. Don't forget the chard. You can still be sewing that around now. I've got bright lights, Lucullus, which is the really soft one. Um, I've got four hook giant and I've also got the perpetual spinach going in, which is another chard. Um, so I've got all of these going. I've got successional sewing of it because I am a very, very sad person if I don't have chard on the go. Like at the moment, I've got nothing. They're like this big. It's never too late for chard. Radishes, don't forget the radishes. You can sew radishes at any time. I've just pulled out a load actually that never really did anything because I sewed them under a covered bed really early. It was just too hot and too dry. So they bolted. But if your radishes do bolt without hearting up, don't just disregard them immediately because it is the seed pods. If you let them flower, let them pod up. Those seed pods are so delicious and probably better than the radish themselves because you get, instead of for each seed, you get one radish. For each radish, you get like 40, 50, 60 beautiful little green crunchy seed pods. So think about that before you get rid of your bolted radishes and sow some more. Although now is the time to be sowing more. I've been a bit boring with my radishes this year, actually. I'm, I've am i been sowing Alba, which is just the plain white one because mum absolutely loves that one roasted, and French breakfast, and that is about it. Last year we had about five or six different varieties, and I don't know why this year, I just, uh, it just hasn't happened. Maybe I will sow some this month. And then kind of going along with the radishes, there is a huge number of salady type things. Lettuces for one, so I, tend to do my lettuces in three sowings. I know a lot of people sow them on a much more regular basis than that, but I'm a pick around the edger rather than take the whole lettuce type person. So we tend to be able to keep them going for quite a long time once they're established. So we sow some really early in the year, we sow some now and we sow some at the end. So one of the ones we're gonna be sowing now is a frizzly one, which is uh, like an endive. So it's a really, really bitter one, but it is so good. And those inner leaves are absolutely delicious. And what's really nice about this is you can pick from the outside and then it will overwinter itself from a sowing now. So you will have them overwinter. That's a real good winner of a lettuce, that one. Another two hearting ones that I grow, uh, Little Gem, obviously a total classic. I don't tend to harvest around the edges of the Little Gem just because uh, it does form such a beautiful tight heart that uh, it's just too delicious. So. I tend to sow these ones a little bit more regularly than the rest, but yeah, so Little Gem will be going in, but also Valmain, which is a stunning lettuce. I absolutely love it. It's a cost type, and this is one that does form a heart, but I tend to do the round the edge harvesting rather than taking the whole head off. And they will last us on three sowings, they will last us for a whole year. A couple of fillers, I like a bit of red frill. I'm not a great fan of Lola Rossa, although it's a really, really good stable grower. I'm not that keen on the flavour of it. So I'm trying some alternatives this year. I'm trying this one, which has got a bit of a red tinge to it and red salad bowl, another red tinged one. They're kind of my options because it's lovely to have the Lola Rossa in a salad because it just looks so good, but it just doesn't taste great to me. God, I'm really into the lettuces, sorry. Another red tinged one, this lettuce here, uh, we grew this for the first time a couple of years ago and then couldn't get the seed. And boy, is this one gonna be on the permanent list. It is a joy, really big, fat, crispy, crunchy, gorgeous, gorgeous leaves, really sweet, but with quite a lot of flavor that some lettuces really don't have. Along a similar veins, Mazur, really great lettuce. Again, it's a frilly one, it's quite bitter and you pick from the outside, that is a bit tick and will keep going over winter. Also this time of year as a first sowing rather than a successional one, some of the mustards and cresses like to be sown on the second half of the year. So I've got a dragon's tongue mustard that's going in and I've also got some Iranian cress and something called grandpa's cress, which was given to me by the Heritage Seed Library. So they're all going in now. They tend to bolt like quicker than you can sow them if you sow them kind of 
uh, May time. So I tend to wait until the end of July to get them in, but then they're good for months and months and months. So yeah, basically good time of year for lettuce because I've just like thrown all my lettuce varieties at you, but it's this time of year, you know, so the lettuces that I sowed so early are just coming into fruition now. So we've been picking a lot, a lot of lettuce and it's really fantastic. And it's a, it's really difficult to remember while we're in the middle of picking them. We've really got to sow some more because otherwise they're going to be over and we won't have any for the second half of the year. And that's always a problem at this time of year, I find, when everything just starting to come up and starting to pick. You've got to really remember that, like thinking a few steps ahead that come like two months, three months time, there isn't gonna be any lettuce left on the plot and really need to get it in pronto. And then the last thing on my list really is herbs. So there's things like, so dill, now's a really good time to get dill in. We planted some dill earlier this year, but the weather's been really strange and, and had a couple of pickings of it, but it's bolted now. So we're just letting that flower because the flowers are gorgeous and we'll use them in uh, cut flower arrangements. But now it's time to get in another load of dill. You can still sow chives now. I use chives as a cooking ingredient, like a herb, but I also use it to make a sulfur spray for courgettes. So you make it like you would a comfrey tea, but with uh, chives, and then you spray it on your courgettes and it stops the powdery mildew, which is pretty handy. I tried it last year for the first time. Our earlier courgettes had really bad mildew last year. And then we had a couple of patty pans, which I had so much later on. And just when they started getting the mildew from the uh, from the older crops, I sprayed them with the chive thing. And then they absolutely flourished for the rest of the year and, and never really got kind of weighed down by the mildew. So I'm definitely gonna be sowing some more chives just to build up my stocks because you do need quite a lot of them. But yeah, very useful plant. Parsley, another wave of parsley is going in this month. We grow flat leaf and curly. My absolute favourite curly one is called Lisette. It just seems to outgrow any problems that any of the other ones can have. And I just grow the standard giant Italian parsley for the flat leaf one. I find that they actually taste really quite different. And uh, up until recently, I was a bit of a, you know, flat leaf kind of girl. And then Lisette came along and really turned my head. And I'm now really into curly parsley. But I'll be getting another two rows of them in this week and then I'll do another load at the end of July. Both of the basils, so just the normal Italian basil, I'll be sowing some more of this ready to go into the polytunnel and also really good time to sow Thai basil. Thai basil has to be sown a little bit later than the normal basil I find, it just doesn't really take off until later in the year but this will be the second uh, sowing of it and it does tend to tire itself out quite a lot we grow it in the polytunnel and even if you're constantly chopping the flower heads off it does really really push out the flowers about mid-september so it's really good to be able to take them out at that stage and have another whole load ready and waiting to go in because if you can stop them flowering or if you can have a replacement you can get Thai basil all the way up until a frost really another herb chervil we grew chervil like seriously for the first time last year and found it was a really, really fantastic herb. Not one I really use. Like I've never kind of gone to the supermarket and bought chervil before, but this was so nice. So I'm going to be sowing some more of that. We haven't sown any yet this year, actually. So I'm going to be getting some of that in this month. But yeah, so basically the moral of that story is there is masses of sowing to be done in July. Just when you think you're past it and everything's looking fantastic at the allotment and all kind of going without starting anything else, it is now time to start thinking about what's going in in September. So a lot of these things can be direct sown or if you're in the situation where you need the space, so the space that these things will be growing in later in the year is currently taken up by what's in there at the moment, definitely do start them in pots, but they don't really need to be in a greenhouse. You can start them off in trays in a cold frame or even just outside, they'll be fine because they don't need the protection of the greenhouse or a cloche. And you could just sow them straight out into the ground. It is just a case of bringing the plants on to the point where they're ready to be planted out when, the, when what's in there already is ready to come out, if you see what I mean. Yeah, so anyway, I'm sorry that wasn't filmed at the allotment. It would have been nice to be kind of standing in the shed and then now I'll be finished filming this. I'll just kind of put the kettle on and go out and do a bit of weeding or something. But it is raining. It's not very july -y weather. I'm really hoping this year is going to untwist its knickers and kind of just sort itself out on the weather front because we've had some stunning days. 
but every kind of patch of stunning days we have like you look at the forecast and the next like four days is rain and that's not great it's great for the garden to be fair but um it's also great for the slugs and the slugs this year have been nuts so so yeah i'm really hoping the weather's going to improve and i will be back up the allotment next week next thursday's video is going to be all about the pond i've got a lot of research to do on that because we've been sticking bits and pieces in there for years most of it wasn't bought it's just been either picked up from other people's ponds or given to us from other people's ponds and basically we don't know what any of it is so i'm going to have a good old research and tell you what we got going on the only thing we did buy that was in there is the water lily which is currently looking unbelievable water lilies just look fake they're so beautiful um so i know what that one is and i've got the variety so <laughs> i'll be able to give you that piece of information but all the rest of the critters and plants and everything that are in there i'm going to have to do my homework in the meantime though i'll see you on tuesday for the normal vlog none of this standing around inside chatting thing See you later, chaps.